Right, grade 11s, this is the reduction formula in the recorded version. I always run through what we're going to do in class anyway, and I've done that a few times. And then we get a hopefully a decent recorded version down before our lesson. Then if you're not able to make the lesson, or you want to recap something from the lesson, you've got this recorded version to go back to. Okay, so the reduction formula, uh, well, let's just dive into it, I think. So let's say we've got a Cartesian plane. And this is kind of the basis for what we're doing. So, yes, please draw a Cartesian plane. And on the Cartesian plane, let's start in the first quadrant. And we're going to say with this line joining here, a distance r, it's going to be at an angle theta. We're used to that, theta. And this point, this time, instead of saying that it's x, y, I'm going to call it a, b. Just to make sure that the other one, we'll, you'll see why. So we've got that and we've got our triangle that's formed. We don't have to draw the triangle, but I enjoy drawing the triangle. It was trigonometry triangles. Okay, forgive me. So we've got that up here. So we know our sine, cos, and tan. Sine, theta. In fact, let's, so let's put them down here. So I'm going to put them in red so they match this red one to say, well, sine, theta is... And again, keep talking about this. Maybe you just remember sine is y of r. Or you remember that sine theta is opposite of a hypotenuse and opposite is y. Now, in this case, it's not y. It's actually b is our y value. So it's b over r. But it's y of r, the y value of r. Okay, and let's do the same for the other two. Cos theta, well, cos, you either just remember, is x over r, so our x value is a, so it's a over r, or you went, oh, it's adjacent. Well, the adjacent one here does happen to be a, because that's our x value and our y value is b, so it's a over r, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, and our last one, tan theta, is opposite over adjacent, b over a, or you just remember it's y over x. Okay, and we're keeping on reinforcing these because we do need to know these. But where we're going towards is to say, what happens if we reflected this? Let me do this in green. Um, let me pick a pinky color. Maybe that will come out more differently. I'm always aware of colors, and please let me know if some colors work better than others. Okay, so we've got our point here, and it's been reflected just been reflected about the y-axis. So that's x value. If this x value were 3, what would this x value here be? Well, it would be negative 3, right? Because it's just been reflected. So it was at 3, now it's at negative 3. Okay, and the y value, let's pretend, and I'm going to put these maybe in green and say, can you imagine that were 3, that were 4, this were 5, then 3 would become negative 3, but the y value b would still be 4. It would still be a positive, the same thing. So I got ahead of myself here and said, so this one here is negative a. In other words, instead of 3, it's negative 3. 4 stayed as 4. So it stays as b. It's the same value. And r remains the same. It's the same distance away. r would still be 5 in our example, just if we had numbers. But we're showing this works for anything. Okay, now our theta, well, if that's theta and this triangle is congruent, it's just a reflection, then this value here is also theta. And now we can look at what would this angle going around, let's take it around here, up to there be. And you might have it already, but I'm going to say, well, what are angles on a straight line? That straight line there is 180 almost hit that so that's that straight line over there is 180 so if that's 180 then that part there is 180 minus theta so this is 180 minus theta that's what that angle is and now what we're interested in this is the reduction formula sine of 180 minus theta what is that equal to well, what is sine? Sine's y over r. 
So the y value is b. So it's the y value b over r. Have a look at that. That looks the same as sine theta. So in other words, our first trig ratio is just saying our first reduction I'm going to put here is sine 180 minus theta. Isn't that just the same as sine theta? So if sine theta is b over r and sine 180 minus theta is b over r, well, they're the same thing, b over r, b over r. And we could always check it. Let's say that we looked at sine of 20, so don't worry about this calculator, but if you're not sure, but sine of 20, 0, 0,34, just remember that part. So let's compare that with sine of 180 minus 20. So if theta were 20, it should be the same, 0, 0,34. It's exactly the same. And that's what I talk about having the calculator there is almost a bit of a check. Okay, now let's run through our other ones. Cos 180 minus theta. So this angle here, cos of it, well, cos of the pink angle on the outside, cos is x over r. So adjacent over hypotenuse. Now the x value is negative a now. So it's negative a over r. Cool. That looks very similar to this one. It's only one difference. Negative, positive. So in other words, not sine. Cos of 180 minus theta, strictly speaking we should have our degree signs here, equals, well, it's almost like cos theta, but it's just negative. Oh yeah, easy enough I think to remember because here's another little trick when we get to tan. Remember the cos diagram. All trig functions are positive here. Cos is positive here, sine is positive here, and tan is positive here. Have a look, which one was positive? Sine. So we work in this quadrant. So look, sine was just sine. Have a look at cos. Cos 180 minus, so in this quadrant, well, instead of being just equal to cos, it's negative, because cos is positive in the first quadrant, but negative here. So let's see, tan 180 minus theta. I'm suggesting that for all of these reduction formulae for these 180 pluses and minuses, 180 minus theta, I'm saying use your cos diagram. I think that's going to be the same as tan theta, but tan's positive here, tan's negative here, so we're going to have to put a negative there. Let's check if that holds true. Tan 180 minus theta. So tan is y over x, opposite over adjacent. So the opposite y is b, and the adjacent is minus a now. That's a negative, so if it was 3, now it's negative 3, so it's minus a. What's the difference between this version and this version? Positive, negative, so in other words, tan of 180 minus theta is just the negative of tan theta. So let's use 20 degrees again. Tan of 20 degrees, 0, 0,36. Okay, now the suggestion is tan of 180 minus 20 should be the same thing, 0, 0,36, but it should be negative. There it is. So that's where the calculator is just a nice little cr crutch to check as well. We've got our cost, we've got how to remember it. The expectation is that you just start using these enough that you remember them. So as we go through it, you just go, oh, sine 180 minus theta is the same as sine theta. But at this stage, we're not there yet. We're not, we're not that comfortable with just going, oh, yes, we know that. Oh, Pythagoras, x squared plus y squared, r squared. Well, we're comfortable because we've used that quite a lot. So that's the point, that we're not that comfortable yet. We're going to get this. So we've got our calculator just to check if we need it. We've got our cast diagram, but these are first reduction formulae. 180 minus, and what is it? Well, sine is just sine, cos is negative, tan is negative. And so let's actually run through one example of where we might use this. Let's say I asked you to simplify it without a calculator. I 
obviously you've got your calculator with you right remember the thirds you've got your calculator so let's run through our example to say simplify without a calculator sine of uh, let's go for well it's going to be nice 120 so this works for any angle but let's say a sine of 120 so first I want you to reduce it in other words let's make this an acute angle so you go okay well this is the same as sine of 180 minus 60 now 60 is a special angle which is why we're reducing it okay well what's sine of 180 minus an angle well from this we're saying that 180 minus the angle is just the same as sine of the angle so this is just the same as sine of 60 degrees because and we've got our cast diagram maybe we just go cis okay for the 180 minuses just look at the cast diagram to see if it's positive or negative okay sine 60 you may not recall from your special angles but you'll always have your calculator with you so you can just go sine of 60 root 3 over 2 root 3 over 2 and there we go there's the answer now you can always just check it what is sine of 120 root 3 over 2 oh, I should be doing it on here hey? so I can just go sine of 60 root 3 over 2 notice how that's the same as sine of 120 root 3 over 2 and as these expressions get more complicated you're gonna see why we need to use these reductions so if I extended this and don't get distracted by the bird that's flown into the room and said what's sine of 120 times sine of 60 well I go that times sine 60 that times sine 60 so that's squared so that times root 3 over 2 equals root 3 times root 3 is 3 over 4 it I'm just extending the question to say it could be something like that where hey, it was quite useful that we could simplify this and reduce it so that's the first bit of reduction to make video on each of these that first one is what we're going to go through in class I'm using this bit of a kind of a dummy run to see how long this takes this that was about 15 minutes give or take that's going to be probably 20 25 minutes in class as you ask questions but it's the same concept for the rest so I'm going to do the rest in video format so you can go through them the important bit is just remember these reduction formulae. So, look forward